you, we, us, they, them, who by him, who by Jesus Christ, the provisions that he has made, <laughs> who by him do believe in God. Through Jesus, you believe in God. If you don't believe in God, it's impossible. But if you don't believe in Jesus, it's impossible for you to believe in God. I didn't say you might. I said, if you don't believe in Jesus and neither, it's impossible for you to believe in God. Because if you don't believe in the Son, you don't have the Father. Huh? John chapter 5, verses 22 to 24. All judgment is in Jesus. What? In Christianity, all judgment is in Jesus because Jesus is Christianity. And he also has life. As the Father has life and who can raise from the dead anyone who wants to, Jesus can do the same thing. What? no big deal because he raised Lazarus from the dead. No big deal. He said, I have life within myself. Not only that, I can die and be born. I can die and, 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 and bring my own self back to life. Figure that out. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead. There we go, the death, burial, and resurrection. Who believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory. That your faith and hope might be in God. God, did you do with Jesus what you said that you did? Now, verse 22. Seeing ye have purified, ye have cleansed your soul. In obeying the truth through the Spirit. Goodness gracious, I just, I just went into a Trinitarian passage of Scripture. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. Trinitarian. You non-Trinitarians, we're going to have to excommunicate you from the body of Christ and I can do it based on what I just read here in 1st Peter chapter 1 verses 18 to 23 I think we should excommunicate from the body of Christ for worship communion and fellowship all non-trinitarian churches that call themselves Christian and don't believe in the Trinity you don't qualify to be called a Christian you're fooling people. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfailing love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, earnestly. Don't give them no lip service. If you love them, love them. You have to love them according to the word now. Don't go talking about hit me on one side, you turn the other cheek. Nah, hit me on the cheek, hit me on one side. I'm not going to turn the other cheek. I'm going to pop you one back. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfriend love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. God, Jesus chastised Peter for cutting off the high priest's servant's ear because Peter was trying to stop the will of God. But Jesus is the one that told Peter it was okay for him to have the sword in the first place. Luke chapter 22, verses 35 to 37. Okay. Now we're going to pray, and I'm going to go into a discussion of today's question and answer session, and we're going to have a lovely time for the rest of the time that I have. Eternal God, our Father, we come once again in the precious and in the mighty name of your darling son, Jesus, just to thank you, Lord God, for being God and for making us fit 
to participate in your inheritance. It was you, dear God, who sent your son to die for us. It was you, dear God, that raised him from the dead that you might give us a right to the tree of life, that you might give us eternal life, a right standing with you, and an abundance, never-ending supply of your grace, which supersedes, which succeeds all condemnation. Now, Lord, bless us as we continue in this study of your word. Open our spiritual eyes of understanding that we might behold your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, based on the text that, the two texts that I have, texts that I've read, Romans 8, 1 to 4, and Romans 10, 1 to, 10, 1 to 4, uh, I should have read Romans 5, 1 to 5, but I'll let you read that for yourself. Read the Romans 5, 1 to 5, because that'll complete the, that'll complete the, complete the, complete the circle. The, the title of this program is the new, is New Testament Christianity. And there's a caption that says, Jesus is Christianity. So, I'm in, in my ministry, I major in New Testament Christianity. The gospel, the good news of Jesus. And my primary focus is trying to make people aware of, uh, aware of who Jesus is, what he's done, and why they need him. So I have a, a major emphasis in life in this ministry, and that is Jesus Christ. Now, my daughter recently graduated from, from college, uh, and her major was in sociology. Her major was sociology, and she, had a, she has a minor in criminal justice. Sociology, the broad scope of social and cultural issues, is her, is her main, was the main thrust and focus of her education. But she had a minor concentration in criminal justice, how the system worked. She knows more about the broad social issue in, in culture and society than she does about the minor issue of, of a criminal justice. How about you? What is, what is your major? In this spiritual walk, if you're a, a born-again believer, what are you majoring in? New Testament Christianity is the major thrust of God's eternal plan from eternity past eternity future is a major thrust and the Old Testament and Judaism are the Old Testament events Genesis to Malachi are minor is a minor subject you can read or you can study Genesis Chapter 1 through 15. You can study Genesis chapter 1 through 15 and skip Exodus to Malachi and you won't miss a thing in God's eternal plan. Because from Genesis 15, 16 to the end of Malachi in God's eternal plan, it's a parenthesis. Or you can set it off with commas. And when you put something in parentheses, you just want to put it there. And when you set it off with commas, that means you can do without it. And I'm here to tell you, In this Holy Bible, 
you can study Genesis chapter 1 through 15, verses 16. The sins of the Amorites are not yet complete. And then you can close that part and open it up again to Matthews and you won't miss a thing in God's eternal plan provided you know what the eternal plan is and where to find it. And anyone that has a, has a, has a major coming out of college should know something about their major. And if you're a Christian, your major should be New Testament Christianity, Christianity, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I have uh, uh, some visuals that I want to I share with you to kind of guide us through this question and answer because uh, I'm going to ask you, what's your major? You're a New Testament Christian? What's your major? Do you know more about David than you do Paul, Peter, James, or John? If you do, you're out of your major. The psalmist is not your major. Isaiah is not your major, nor Ezekiel. Daniel. They, they play it, they play it, they play it, they play a minor part. Peter, Paul, and John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, right to the Hebrew, Jude, and James. That's, that's, that's your major. That's your major. Uh, it's beginning to irritate me a little bit when we ask somebody to read the scripture. First thing he does is go over there and get a psalm or go over there and get something that the Holy Spirit told uh, Isaiah to write or David to write. And forget about what Jesus said and what he told the apostles and what the apostles told the prophets and what the Holy Spirit told them to write. The Holy Spirit told us, told the apostles and prophets what to write so that we would know how to live a life pleasing to God based on faith. So, on camera one, I have a uh, book of solutions. I prepared a, 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 a book of solutions. Uh, the writing is too small, but it says, from God's perspective. Uh, the, the, the Bible is God's story being told by him according to his outline. If you got a, if you got a major in college, you follow the outline for that major. And if you're a Christian, your outline is the New Testament. That's what it is. So in the time that I have left, I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about what your major should be if you are a New Testament Christian. If you're an Old Testament scholar, you're a good storyteller. But since there's no truth of Christianity in the Old Testament, it's only a verification of the Christianity that is in the New, you are the major. major. 